Hello friends and welcome to this image to image tutorial inside of Stable Fusion. Today I'm going to teach you how it works and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks along the way. So uh, let's get started with the tutorial. Oh, and by the way, what do you think of the new camera and uh, the new setup here? You like it? I think it's kind of cool. And do you know the difference between a camera and the sock? Well, the camera takes photos and uh, the sock takes five tells. Hello, 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 my friends. Good to see you again. So I have this picture here of a woman with a blue hair. And this image is actually generated from mid journey, but it doesn't matter. You can use anything. You can use stable fusion generated images. You can use mid journey generated images. You can use photos. You can use paintings. It doesn't matter. Stable fusion is going to look at basically in layman's terms, the color in the image. Now let's drag this into our image to image, which we will be working in today. We're going to check out the various features and tools inside of image to image, like a sketch in paint, in paint sketch, etc. But let's just start with a regular image to image. Let's say you want to change this. Let's put in man with blue hair. I'm going to load some of my styles. I'm going to load the default negative and realistic photo portraits. These styles are not default in Stable Diffusion. You're going to need to go into the video description and download them there. They're free. Now, if you've been following one of my other tutorials, you're going to change the sampling method to DPM plus plus two in Keras. This is not necessary. It's just a good sampler to use in general sampling steps between 15 and 25. Today we're using the deliberate model. Most models are natively using 512 by 512. 768 is also a good square resolution to use. If you don't know what you're doing, you can use whatever, but if you're new, stick with the rectangle formats for now and then work your way up. We're doing one image now. And now this, the denoising strength down here. This is the most important setting inside of image to image and all the subsequent features like in paint, in paint sketch, etc. So this decides how much of this first image is going to get transferred into this second image. So let me show you quickly here. If I lower this to zero, we will get zero percent change. So we will retain the previous image. So it will read the image and basically do nothing with it. If we would change this to one, which would be a hundred percent change, we will change the previous image dramatically. And if we run several images here, let's do four here at the denoising one, you will see that they should vastly differ from each other. Now you will get a man with blue hair, but it doesn't really follow this image. And I can show you that by doing the same thing. So here we have a couple of images, man with blue hair. But if you just take another image, let's take, let's take this black and white image instead. And we're running this again. You might be thinking, well, we should be getting a lot of black and white images, right? Well, no, because the denoising strength is set so high that the image changes dramatically. As you can see, there's a slight resemblance in what we have here, but we really have no control and this is basically pointless. What you should be aiming for, let's put this image back in, is a denoising strength value between, I would say, 0.4 and 0 0.7, 0 0.8, depending on what you want to do. If you want to keep as much as possible of this image, while still giving you more detail, you can use 0.4. This will keep a lot of the image still intact, but still introduce changes. And as you can see here, it's a different image, but they look similar. Now we said man, but it still looks sort of like a woman or maybe a mix between them. You can see the piercing here in the nose has almost vanished. So if you would want to change it, this even further, you would have to introduce more noise into the image and the diffusion or the generation. And you do that by increasing this slider. So let's try 0.6 this time. And now this looks visually like a man with blue hair. 
and it is vastly different in appearance from the left one. If you would ask someone, they would probably say that the left one looks like a woman and the right one looks like a man. However, the composition is still here. You can see the blue hair, the angle of the face is similar. You have the little bokeh blurred lights in the background. Those are still retained. So that's a great way to change the image, but use the same composition. And that exact value, 0.6, is something I use 90% of the time. And when I'm not getting the results I'm looking for, I'm adapting this value a little. I might raise it a little bit to get more changes or lower it a little bit to get less changes. And let me show you here, if you run four images with these exact settings, we will get four different images here, but they will all resemble our left input. And as you can see, all the images that are popping up here live are resembling the left one, but you will get different people. And as you can see in the face, well, they sort of have similar facial features, but they're different people. And that's also true for the bokeh and the light at the background. It's similar, but it introduces more detail, more changes into the image. Even the jacket changes a little bit in each of the images. So a good way of thinking of it is like, think of the colors in this image. Those colors will transfer to the next step in image to image. I think that's a great segue to image to image sketch and in-paint sketch. So if I would send this to sketch, for example, send this over here to sketch. And if I would paint something, let's take some red here and just paint the lips here super red. And let's run this again. So we have everything the same, except we still have a random seed. But apart from that, everything is the same. We have man with blue hair, we have the same styles and the same settings. And if we generate this now, it will read this left image as something that has, well, a blob of red over the mouth. And if you look at these, I would say that, well, we didn't get the desired result. In some of the images, maybe the lips are a little red or more red, but I, I can't say that we're getting what we're looking for. So what you could do here then, if you lower this denoising, let's put it at 0.5, for example, you should be able to see that we're introducing more red onto the lips. And as you can see here, except for maybe the third one here, these lips are super red. These are red, these are red. And this is just a very crude way of painting straight on top of the image. Now you could ch make changes inside of Photoshop, Photo-P, or photo bash something together, but this works too. And it's super powerful. I could, for example, let's remove this. Let's paint here, for example, let's take yellow here. And now let's paint some kind of glasses here. So we're trying to do glasses on our face. Now I can't say this is the best looking glasses I've painted. So we have man with blue hair and we're not changing the prompt. Now you could add in up here, man with blue hair, and yellow glasses. Let's try that in a bit. But first, let's just run this again. So we've removed the red lips and we have man with blue hair and crude looking glasses. And now we're getting glasses here, but they're not looking great at all. And this is to be expected when you're working with stable diffusion or image generation in general, especially in image to image. There is no perfect setting for everything and you need to adapt the denoising strength for every time you test this. So let's again, let's put it back up to 0.6 and let's run this once more and let's see if we get a more favorable result this time. Let's hope for a happy little accident. So this time around, we are getting glasses that look a little better. Now they're not perfect in any way. Some of the eyes are, these eyes are kind of weird. These are okay-ish and I like this one here Maybe we shouldn't have painted yellow over the eyes. It's changed, changed the glass too much. But this glass here, the side, looks very nice. Now you might ask, well, what if we raise the denoising even more? Of course you can. So let's go even higher. Let's go, let's say 0.8 here. Now it will dramatically change the image. And as you can see in the first one, we didn't even get glasses. The second one has glasses, but it wasn't resemblant to 
how we painted it, and the third and fourth didn't even have them. However, looking at this one here, the glasses look much better because we introduced more noise and given the AI more to work with on top of our crude looking yellow painting, it can make its own decisions easier. When we have a lower denoising strength, it's really locked into what we have painted. And I wouldn't say that this is a great looking painting of, of glasses. And I don't think you would either. Now what we can do, especially since we had three of these don't have glasses at all, then we can add in up here and yellow glasses. And if we generate again with the same settings, we should be able to see more glasses. And I hope we are because I'm not cherry picking these results. These are all live generated here with you and me together. And as you can see, we now have four images with yellow glasses. Number one and four here kind of messed up behind the ears with uh, the glasses. But number two here looks pretty good and number three here as well. So just remember the denoising strength and what it can do for you together with the prompt. Now another great way to keep working with this is you can iterate on an image moving forward. So let's say you have this and you keep generating, you aren't getting what you're looking for. Maybe you're getting this all the time or or this. So what you can do is just, you can send this to, for example, image to image or in paint, depending on what is wrong with the image. In paint will fix a part of the image. In image to image will fix the whole image. So let's send this to image to image, for example. Now we have an input where the glasses are actually looking pretty good, except for the back part here. So if we work with this image, we could actually lower the denoising to about 0.6 and we could run four images here. And this input will be better than what we had with the woman and our crudely painted yellow glasses. Maybe you, you can tell I got an A in art from how I painted that. And as you can see in our result here, it, well, except for we are getting here the first one, it's actually pretty good. Now some of these are a little messed up, but just keep working with them. And let's take the, say we have that, this is a good image. So take that one and you can keep iterating on that. And then if you say, okay, this is very close to what I want, but I need, I need the like, oh, this isn't exactly, I need, I need a difference somewhere. Then you can just keep working and lower the denoising. Let's go 0.5 because we're getting close to what we want. We're lowering the amount of change we get into the image. So we're getting four new images and these will be more similar to the left one, but still introduce some changes in the image. And here you have a new choice. Let's say, oh, I don't like this one because there's some hair here. And oh, I don't like this one because of the eye. And you say, okay, this one feels good. And that's how a great way of, of improving and iterating on an image. Now let's say you have an image that you like, but you don't want to change all of the image. Then inside of image to image, there's a feature called in painting. And I have a full guide on that. So you can check that out in uh, the link above, but I'm going to quickly cover it because it's a feature of image to image. So if you send this to in paint, two modes of in painting. The first one just basically paints a mask. So Let's say you paint the eye here, you can say human eye, and we're changing this to only masked, which will give it more detail. And if we generate now, let's put it up to 0.6 again, we're doing four images. If we generate this now, you'll see that it zooms in as it will only generate this part of the image, the eye here, and it will give you hopefully a better eye, but at the very least a higher resolution eye. These turned out a little bit too big, in my opinion. Let's actually change it also to blue human eye. And then let's lower the denoising so we're not going too far away because we're just changing one eye and we don't want it too different from the other one. Now we're using more of what was there previously, but we're still raising the detail of the image. And as you can see in these versions, we're getting better looking eyes. And I think even the, the third one here is looking pretty sweet. 
Now this is obviously not a super sharp high res image, it's just a 768 by 768, but I think you, you see what we're getting at. So this is the regular in painting. And again, check my detail guide for that because that's like a full 10 plus minute video that covers specifically just the in painting. Now, if you send this to in paint sketch, let's drag that over there and send that to in paint sketch. Now, in the sketch previously, you remember we painted red for the lips and yellow to get his glasses. In the regular in painting, you're just painting a mask painting black, but you're not getting black. If you paint with in-paint sketch, you're getting that color. So if we would paint red here, for example, you're not only masking the eye, you're getting red in that eye. So let's see, let's paint there, let's paint a little white here. So this should get us a pretty weird looking eye. Let's change it to red human eye. And the difference here with in-paint sketch and the previous sketch that we used, in the previous sketch, everything of the image changed. Now we have a mask and a sketch. So the eye is masked and the color is added. So you will see again that it zooms in here if you have only masked selected. Let's add the denoising because we want more changes this time around. Now this eye will probably not match the other eye, but it will give you us a different result depending on how you have painted this. And again, this is a super crude way to do it. You can do it much, much better if you work in like um, Photoshop or a better tool. And as you can see, we're getting sort of the result we're looking for, but it's kind of blown out. So what we could do is we could revert back here and let's paint that red again and just do the, this part here, the red here, and maybe raise the denoising a little bit and generate again. Now you will get, you will keep the white on the outside. That's more resemblant of what was there previously in the picture. And just adding red on top of this. Now it's a very strong red, but that can be adjusted with the denoising slider. So just play around with that. And like we did previously, you could send this, let's say that you like where this is going. Let's take this one. Instead of our crude sketch, we're gonna send this to in paint. Now we have the red one here that we could mask this and make more eyes out of this better input. So I think that's a great way of thinking about it. Generative AI is not just a one click solution. It can be depending on what you're looking for. But if you want more control of the process, you're gonna have to iterate one step at a time. And as you can see here, the eyes are, well, turning a little bit better each time. Now. It's still not, it's still kind of popping out too much on the, in the image. But I think the third one here, we're starting to get what we're looking for. And you can also treat this at a photo bash. Let's say that this is a result that you want to upscale and get better. You can send this back straight into image to image where we started and rework this whole image. So let's say man with blue hair, yellow glasses, red eye. And let's lower the denoising because we're very, very close to what we're looking for. And let's raise the size here. Let's do a thousand by a thousand. Let's do two images and we're generating this. So now we have a new input that's vastly different from what we had in the beginning with a woman. We have the glasses, we have the red dye and everything. And this will get us a result that is more realistic all over basically. I would say this isn't perfect, looks like some sort of reptile eye. This one's maybe getting closer to what we're looking for. But this is where you're going to have to keep working with it yourself. Like I said, with denoising strength, there's no perfect value. I tend to go between 0.4 and 0.6 and raise it above 0.6 if I want to increase more changes. I rarely go below 0.4 unless I have a specific use case in mind. Now a different use case of image to image could be something like this. Let's say you have this image generated from Stable Diffusion. And this is a low res 512 by 512 image and you want to get this to a high resolution. And upscaling it will not introduce more detail. Now another way of working could be using text to image and using the high res fix. But if you have an image already, what you can do is input this here. So this is a castle here. You have a character standing in front of it. This is 512 by 512. So you can either 
change the settings here by yourself or you can use the resize by. So if we change this, we're gonna scale this up to two. So it's gonna be from 512 by 512 to 1024 by 1024. And let's do four images of this and my favorite setting 0.6. So this will introduce some changes into the image while still retaining a lot of what is here. So we're not changing anything else. Now, the resize modes here, we haven't talked about them, but they're only interesting if you're using images that are different in scale to what you're resizing. Let's say you have a square image here and you're resizing to like a, a vertical or a horizontal, then these decide how this is changed. So crop and resize, you'll have, you will crop this and lose part of the image. Resize will basically just resize it. Resize and fill is used a lot with outpainting because then you can resize this and add to the edges. But uh, you don't need to worry about that too much now. Just uh, check on my in painting guide or the out painting guide to go through that in detail. Anyway, let's go back to resize this by two. And let's say here, hero adventure standing in front of epic castle. And we're gonna raise this up a bit with control arrow up. And we are generating four images with denoising strength 0.6. And you can instantly see that we are retaining a lot of what was there previously. All the images will resemble the left input. However, the input is 512 and the output is 1024 in resolution. So we'll get a bigger image with more detail. Now bear in mind, bigger resolution will take more GPU power. But as you can see, we are getting better looking images. You can also see why they are similar they're not exactly the same, especially if you look at the hollow part here under the, the rock or the mountain. Here we even have some sort of lightning going through, which looks pretty cool. So this is a great way to introduce more detail into an image that is low resolution. And you can even keep iterating on this. So you could send this back to image to image and resize it again. Now this will take immensely more of your resources because you would resize it up again to 2048. And going that high, I'd recommend you use the tile upscaling. I have a tutorial on that, so just check the one with the says 8K something something. So I hope you enjoyed this and that basically concludes this image to image guide. I hope I covered everything and that you feel that you understand in the image to image in Stable Fusion a little bit better now. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any more questions, pop them right in there and I'll see if I can answer. And also, let me know what you want to see in my next videos. As always, have a good one. See ya.